At the end of yesterday's podcast, I mentioned how I have seen really good PHP developers who have moved into WordPress development, or I've had to take over a project uh, built by one of these people who were actually not very good WordPress developers. And the big reason why is because they really didn't take the time to dig into WordPress and understand how it works, understand everything that's available to them. And they would sort of reinvent the wheel doing things in PHP that WordPress sort of already handled for them. And that learning how to do things the WordPress way not only helps you to build better plugins, but also makes it a little bit more available to you in terms of not needing to know as much PHP as you might think in order to build some actually really functional and really good plugins. And so today what I wanted to do is I wanted to go through and give you some specific examples of that. So we're going to go through three inside of this episode. Hey there, I'm John Morris, johnmorrisonline.com. Welcome back to another episode of The John Morris Show. As I mentioned, we're going to get into some common WordPress plugin building mistakes that PHP developers make. Now, of course, before I do that, I do want to encourage you to head on over to store.johnmorrisonline and check out all of my courses over there. In particular, I've just released my WordPress course. You can find that at johnmorrisonline.com slash WordPress course. And we're actually, I actually go through and teach you how to build a plugin. I show you a lot of this WordPress way stuff. So if you're wanting, wanting to learn how to build WordPress plugins the right way, again, that is johnmorrisonline.com slash WordPress course. All right. So with that out of the way, let's get into some of these examples. So one of the big ones is, and this is sort of maybe not a hundred percent WordPress versus PHP, but it's custom post types versus custom database tables. So one of the things that you see quite often is when someone who's maybe not as familiar with WordPress comes in to build a plugin, you're maybe you're taking contact form submissions or you're you're collecting some sort of data. That's often a thing that you're going to do in inside of a WordPress plugin. One of the things that you'll see people do is they'll go in and they're just sort of automatically programmed as PHP developers to go to start by building the tables in the database in order to store that data. And it sort of makes sense, but the problem with that is that WordPress has this built-in custom post type system, which is recommended as sort of the, the first route that you go when it comes to data collection. And, there, and there's lots of reasons why, and we'll get into that. Uh, and, and there are obviously situations where custom database tables make sense, but there, a lot of times what happens is people don't even know about the custom post types or they don't even really think it through and, and sort of make the decision uh, rationally and in a well thought out way of whether they should do custom post types or custom database tables. And so, again, what I want to point out here is that it, your first instinct should be to okay, I'm going to use custom post types unless, and then you should have some good reasons why you're not going to use custom post types. That's sort of the recommended route to to take when it comes to WordPress development. Now, there's plenty of situations where custom database tables, you'll have good reasons. So I'm not saying you should always use custom post types, but that should be sort of your default thinking. And for a lot of PHP developers, it's sort of the opposite. So let's talk through some of the benefits of custom post types. Right off the bat, you know, the, one, of, one of the big things is you get pretty much all of the UI in the admin area of, of WordPress. You just sort of get that automatically when you use custom post types. So when you create a, and register a new custom post type, you know, the menu items, the edit screens, the, the tables, even in the WordPress exporter, when you go to export posts, if you've created a custom post type, you can export just that custom post type as well. And you essentially get all of that stuff for free, quote unquote, meaning you don't have to write all of that code. Just by registering a custom post type, you get all of that stuff. So there's a lot that's available to you by using a custom post type that you would otherwise have to code yourself in terms of UI. You also automatically take advantage of WordPress's caching. So they have this sort of built-in caching system in WordPress when you use custom post types. It automatically takes advantage of that. You don't have to write the code in order to do that. You also automatically get access to you know some some of the goodies that come with posts like post revisions. You get access to WP query, which means that you know in theory you don't really have to write any SQL code. Um, also, if you're planning on distributing the plugin, 
a lot of developers in the WordPress community are familiar with custom post types and how to use those. So you are sort of opening yourself up automatically to making your your plugin that you're creating more extensible by other plugins. So there's a lot of benefits to using custom post types versus custom tables. Now, the downside is that when you use custom post types, you're sort of tied to this this archetype or metaphor of post. So and what that means is this is sort of a kind of a data type and WordPress will then expect certain things as a result of that. So for example, it's it, you're you're sort of tied to this idea of you know your custom post type having a title, a content, an author, etc. Now, again, it's not hard fast because you can work around some of that stuff. But if you want to have if you have a data type that is just dramatically different from you know the sort of the post archetype or, or or data type, then you may find yourself having to work with a lot of custom fields, and you may not be able to take advantage of as much of the stuff you get for free by using custom post types. And so those advantages sort of start to dissipate, and that's when maybe using a custom database table might make more sense. So again, there's a lot of upsides, but there is also the downside of being tied to that that sort of archetype. So again, that's one example of sort of the, a common mistake that you'll see PHP developers make when, when building WordPress plugins. Another one is not using admin post.php to handle form submissions and instead just just handling form submission using raw post data. So WordPress has an actual has a a, a, a file in it essentially that is designed to handle form submissions. It's admin post.php. And it's a it's a really simple simple file. It's about 71 lines of code or somewhere around in there, 70 ish lines of code. But it does a couple things that are important. First off, it sets the privileges sort of context. So it it will tell you whether someone is logged in or logged out. And depending on what your what data you're collecting for your form, that can be really important. So you can actually have sort form submissions on the front end that are meant for logged out users. And so in those to admin post, you also have form submissions on the back end that are meant for privileged users and still send that to admin post. So it sort sort of creates this central spot to send all of your form submissions. And then it has a an intelligent hooking system for you to be able to hook in based on what privileges someone has, whether they're logged in or logged out, and also the the form, the specific form that was submitted. And if it was your form versus you know the myriad other forms that could be inside of WordPress. And so again, it 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 just it it does some of those things for you and it also keeps you from just having to create another page just to handle your form. There's already a file there that'll do it. You can hook into it. You can target your specific form in order to handle just it using your your callback function. You'll know if someone is logged in or logged out and you'll have sort of instant access to the post data from that form submission. So it eases the, the, the form submission process inside of WordPress. And again, a lot of PHP developers who come over to WordPress just simply don't know about that. And so they, they sort of build their forms and in their short codes, they'll put their post handling script in right inside of, uh, of that short code or maybe somewhere else. And they'll write that all of themselves. And maybe they'll do all of the checking to see if someone is logged in or logged in. It's just a lot of extra code that you would have to write when you could just be sending it to admin post. So that's another example. The last one here is when it comes to actually inserting data, in particular inserting post or custom post type data. A lot of times what you'll see is PHP developers using sort of direct SQL and writing their own SQL statements instead of building using the built-in WordPress functions. A really common built-in WordPress function is WP insert post. And the nice thing about this is it's sort of pre-formatted so you don't have to write any SQL code. It, it sort of has the parameters, the, the arguments that you can submit to it that are related to the data and pretty much everything that you could, any sort of data you could ever want to insert about a particular uh, t- a particular object or 
particular piece of data. So it can handle just about anything you would throw at it. And it's sort of pre-formatted, so you don't have to write the SQL. You just use that function, and then WordPress takes care of the rest. It also takes care of SQL injection for you, so you don't have to worry about that part of it. And then it also takes care of sort of uh, intelligent defaults, because for every record that you create inside of WordPress, you know there's a myriad of different pieces of data uh, or, or different uh, parameters for that data the, that you might you are able to to set but a lot of those for depending on what the data is you may not want to worry about or whatever and so the defaults that are available there sort of take care of all of that for you and so again you just have a simple easy function that you can use and call and and submit your data through that takes care of all of the hard stuff for you. But a lot of PHP developers just don't know about it uh, or, or don't do the research to figure it out, and so then they don't use it. So, again, those are three sort of common mistakes that I've seen. That's obviously not everything, but when the, the, the bigger idea here is that what I, I sort of said this yesterday, I think what's more important than being sort of a PHP genius is understanding how WordPress works, understanding the built-in functions that are available, understanding the hooking system, understand sort of the overall architecture and what's available to you and the things that you can do that keep you from writing a lot of extra code. And when you really dig into that, what you'll find is, depending on what your plugin is and how complex it is, but often what you'll find is you, you, you have to write a lot less PHP code than you might think which sort of leads to you don't necessarily need to know as much PHP uh, as you might think. And so that can be very helpful for a lot of people who want to get into WordPress plug plugin building who may not necessarily be like this master genius PHP developer. You don't really need to be to get started with it. Now, of course, you know, I've, I've, I've talked about this throughout the week. This is sort of what my, my purpose was for building a WordPress course. As I mentioned, I didn't set out to create an end-all, be-all sort of WordPress plugin building course. What I wanted to do was sort of show you, as a matter of fact, all three of these things are things I talk about in the course and show you how to do, how to create custom post types, how to use admin post, how to use WP insert post. So we cover all of these in detail in the course and show you how to use them. But the idea is to show you how to dig into WordPress, the stuff that's available to you in WordPress, sort of the basics of just setting up a plugin and introduce you to WordPress plugin building and sort of get you headed down the right path. So you're not going to learn everything that you could ever want to know, but you are going to get started off on the right foot and see a lot of things inside of WordPress that you might not have known about uh, had you just sort of jumped into it yourself. So again, if you're wanting to get into WordPress plugin building, I, I strongly suggest taking that course so that you get started on the right foot and don't end up making a lot of these uh, mistakes that can set you back or, or lead to creating plugins that are insecure and that sort of thing. So again, you can learn more about that course at johnmorrisonline.com slash WordPress course. All right, that'll do it for this episode. If you liked the episode, I'd appreciate it if you'd share it with someone who would like to learn more about WordPress plugin building, whether it's a group or individual, I'd, I'd really appreciate that. Also, all the past episodes and the subscribe links are over at johnmorrisshow.com. That's iTunes, Android, TuneIn, all that. And again, johnmorrisshow.com. And finally, if you'll rate and review the podcast over on iTunes, I will give you module one of my PHP 101 course for leaving an honest review. All the details for that, are, again, are at johnmorrisshow.com. Just click the Start Here link at the top. All right, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.